How I, much I do you chuckle when you edit the episodes? Mm, just depends on the content of the episode. Mm. Some episode, episodes are just like hilarious, and then there's ones where Chinotas are on. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason I drink. Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Nitai, and join me today, t- tonight, we have everyone! Uh, yes. We have our very own senpai, Alex, with us. I, 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 I. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, we have I our could Zarf's... resist, man. I mean, can you ever when we talk about JoJo? No, no. It comes with the territory. There was an unsucked cock. I have to. I. I we gotta go get it, Natai. <laughs> anyway, we have our czar of source material with us, John. Hey guys, did you know that in terms of male and human female? <laughs> oh my friend? god! <laughs> I hate you. I tried. I tried to do. Hey it. guys, do you know that in terms of male, human, and female no. stand proportions? Uh, Finish anyway. the thought. Finish the thought. Do it. Do it, no. you coward. No, Do just it. Move Finish on. it. Just move on. We're just move on, on, bro. We're moving on. And finally, we have our very own Hamon mo- mouth breather, Chinoda, with us. <laughs> <laughs> I asked and I received. Oh, my God. I didn't know what you were going to do, but I'm so glad I was ready to do something. Where were, didn't we have a different bit queued up, Alex? Did you ask? I, I, th- my idea originally when we did this was I was going to be reading like the first chapter of the manga because I own part two, like it's in its entirety. And as you guys are going to be under your desk, and I would just be like, oh, wait, get my masters, and you guys would just rise up. <laughs> in this setup, oh, it would cheesy. be a bit more difficult for can't, me, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. We can't thought. do that anymore, but unfortunate. This is why we can't have nice things, right? Anyway, yeah. so yeah, as we said, we're continuing our JoJo Sporocast series, and today we're going to p- talk about part two, uh, Battle Tendency, uh, which I know Woo. for, yeah, for many of us is like the, the, the point in JoJo where everything clicked, I think, in terms of getting what the, sh- the show is actually going for and the type of energy it has. And I know personally, for me, that was the point with the anime, though, like, okay, now I'm Getting why people are into this, and I think all of yeah, us yeah, this agree is on when that. it yeah. got good. I feel like this is the point where I realized I liked JoJo. Part three is where I realized I love JoJo. I maintain that part two is still my personal favorite part. Mm. I just love Young Joseph a lot. Now, is, is that is that solely because Sugita voices Young Joseph? <laughs> Not solely because Sugita voices Young Joseph, but like, but it's a big know, part man. of it. Let's be honest, it helps. It helps. Like, sure, it's it's very basic part compared to like three and beyond. Like three and beyond because of introduction of stands and whatnot, and mm. it just like reinforcement of all the themes. It does get a lot better, and I, I admit that. However, part two is still one of my personal favorites, just because I I absolutely love the storyline. It's funny you love... say that though. It's funny you say that though to call it basic, because I would argue that part two is still has some bonkers moments and things oh, it's for going sure. for, you know? Like, it's still... Yeah, but I'm saying in, in the generic peak. structure of Shonen, it's very basic. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, go, go somewhere, you know, fight people. Go somewhere else, fight other people. It's also... I mean, that's kind of all of JoJo's. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> some JoJo's up. It's, it's a Shonen. Occasionally, you throw in a MacGuffin in there. Yeah. It's, and it's cool how... It's cool how, like, part two is this, again, like, you could see that Araki is still, like, trying new things, but he still holds, because it's, like, new territory for him, he still holds on to, like, some older ideas. For instance, I remember uh, in, I think, in the um, hardcover realist they did for part two for the manga, in one of the um, interviews they had with him, he talks about how in the change from part one to part two, when you realize he's going to go for a new main character, he still he was still kind of unsure if general audiences would like get it's still the same manga 
So he tried to keep Joseph to look like kind of similar to jo- to uh, Jonathan. And lately, one of the sentences like, "I just put like a like a like a a, a pilot's hat on him," and I was like, "Yeah, that's that's good enough of a change. It'll be fine." It's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it it also works narratively. They are supposed to be related, so it yeah. makes sense that there'd be some physical similarities. Yeah, so, but like personality wise, they they're they're completely different. Opposite. Yeah. So oh different. yeah, they're yeah. very different. I would say that's true for most of the main JoJo characters. Is that they may be related in some way, but mm-hmm. they all have very unique personalities. Well, to like describe uh, Jonathan, it's like truly a gentleman, right? Yes. And yeah. then you have uh, Joseph, and it's like he's truly a rapscallion. <laughs> like, look at this little shit, dude. He's a lad. If, he is a lad. Jo- if Jonathan met Jotaro, he'd have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> he couldn't believe that his own great grandson, great great grandson. I think it's great great, right? Uh, great, so great, Joseph's great grandson. grandfather, great grandson. Yeah, because Joseph grandson. is his grandson. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, right. Uh, great grandfather would have our dad be like, "Oh, my great grandbaby, <laughs> he hit a woman." <laughs> <laughs> And and obviously the family tree is just going to get more stupider the further along we go. Oh yeah, we don't just need wait. to worry about that. Just wait, it gets worse. So the manga was released between November eighty seven and March eighty nine. So part two was like pretty short run, like a two year run. Uh, and in the anime adaptation, it's a part of season one, you could say, and consists of episodes ten to twenty six. Um, for the most part, uh, it's the same team that worked on it as the team that worked on part one, obviously, because it was all the same season, with a few exceptions. So again, same directors, the duo of uh, Naokatsu Tsuda and Kenichi Suzuki, characters and designs by Shimizu Takako. And the big difference in terms of the production for part two versus part one is that we have a different composer, actually. Uh, this time it's Taku Iwasaki. Um, before we get to uh, stuff regarding the actual OPs and ED, because I do have a lot to say about the OP, I do want to ask you guys, did you notice like anything different with this soundtrack, with this new composer coming along? Like, yes, it sounds awesome. Highlights? Yeah, it sounds way, way better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, compared like, to dude, part one. Aztec dubstep, like, come on. Now, <laughs> I will say, I like, I do like the OST, the score for part one. I especially love Jonathan's theme a lot, but in terms of, like, memorable tracks and everything, part two's gotta be by a mile. Mm. Shout out to like Lotus Juice, by the way. I think that part one is more, it's, it's, it's the OST is a lot more serious, in my opinion. It is. Well, the story is more serious, honestly. Yeah, yeah. but Part two is like, all right, we're just gonna just go full, full uh, sail Zany. into the, the, the fucking wacky JoJo shit, and that's what I love about part two. It's like, fuck it, dude, pull out the Tommy gun, like. And I, I feel like the soundtrack <laughs> reflects that too, because mm-hmm. some of, some of the tracks just go super hard, like unnecessarily hard. It's it's great. I love I love, like the soundtrack is amazing. If like any of you is like curious about it, i would highly recommend go and actually like explore the soundtrack and go listen to it some of like the main track like the main track for uh joseph uh overdrive is amazing it's like it's like this very like energetic beat and you have and again i'm gonna say a lot of lotus juice adds so much energy to this soundtrack um if you play can i just Persona- say can I just say that if you like this soundtrack a lot, it's probably because you you like some of Taku Iwasaki's other work, um, like Gurren Lagann. That's true, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's another that's anime a with a phenomenal OST. Also, like, so Lotus Juice is a very uh, uh, famous rapper in Japan. He was a part of the soundtracks for Persona 3 and 4, actually, uh, mm-hmm. which is really dope. Um, I think he adds a lot of energy to the soundtrack. And also, there's a lot of really cool nods. I think one of the tracks even uses some uh, elements from... Um, I don't remember which Yes song it is, but it has like the same beginning guitar riff, which is really oh, cool because... Um, Owner of a Lonely Heart. Yeah, it's Owner of a Lonely Heart, which is sick because, again, yeah. Yes are the band performing D.E.D., uh, which is still the same, still roundabout, just different visuals slightly. Can I, can I just say, if we get to an anime adaptation of JoJo's Part 9 and they don't use Owner of a Lonely Heart as the fucking ED, what was all of this even for? 
it's you need all to bring it yes, back around. It's just a yes tribute all around, you know? Exactly. It was a yes tribute the entire time. You just don't understand. But yeah, if the soundtrack is awesome. To pull that off. <laughs> um, one more thing before we move on to actually talking about the part itself is, uh, is the new OP, which again, produced mm-hmm. by uh, Kamikaze Doga, Bloody Stream. The song was written by Koda. Um, what do you guys feel about this new OP versus the first one? I personally like the first one more just because, like, it's so classic, you know, like, Jojo, Jojo, Jojo. <laughs> but then, like, yeah. then you have Bloody Stream. It's, like, it's a lot slower, not as energetic, it feels like, until you get into so more jazzy. into the song. Yeah. But it's really good, too, because it's, like, I don't know. Something, something, like a bloody stream. It's like, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it doesn't get me as hype as the first one, though. That's for sure. Mm. But it's still good. And it's, it's classic. Like, I can instantly recognize these the first two OPs. Mm-hmm. Just like, JoJo's, I hear JoJo's. Yeah. yeah. What, what about you, Alex? This, um... I love it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like John. I feel like the first one is more of an iconic JoJo's OP compared to this one. But I will say one thing that that definitely helps this OP out is when you hear it with sound effects. I feel like this OP is a better OP with the sound effects than without. And they only do that in the like last episode, right? Yeah, that's the next episode. Yeah. The next, next last episode. Yeah. 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 Last episode. I wonder why anime does that. They always do it like towards the end. Only the JoJo hype does it like it's that the consistently. Most anime don't do uh, no, sound No, anime do that, yeah. No. Some, anime, some anime, anime do that. A lot of it. Like, it's... I would Maybe say it's should... a straight-up trope. <laughs> yeah, it's an anime-like making trope. I don't know. I, and I, I don't quite understand why they do that, but... I don't think I don't I've seen either. most anime use a special effect version, aside from JoJo. I can't remember. Now, I will say like very few anime have... Uh, OPs where the main villain takes over the OP near the end, but Shh, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll that's, get to that eventually. We'll Come to... on, <laughs> that's think... unique to JoJo's. I do think the visuals are like stunning for this OP. Like the hmm. one, I think my favorite section is the introduction of the Pillar Man, where it switches to a two D uh, uh, style, where they're like this like rough and sketchy versions of them. It's almost like you, they can't be contained by how they're presented. It's it's awesome. I think it's an mm-hmm. awesome OP. Um, but yeah, so what happened in part two, actually? Um, so yeah, a so lot. we jumped to, we yeah, learned about the might of German medicine. Yes. <laughs> German <laughs> <science>. <laughs> Nazis? What? In my anime? <laughs> This is so what, ju- this, listen, this is one of the few stories I've ever seen where you're actually thinking, a Nazi guy is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I like this German person who is affiliated with a certain party. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I mean, the entire theme, like for part two, was like, don't mm-hmm. judge a book by its cover. Like th- th- that's yeah. it, the entire thing from start to finish. Like when yeah, we have, it's like, uh... it's like people fooling each other for like, like the main character. Literally, his his main power is being like like fooling the enemy to land like with his tricks, you know, because he is a trickster as opposed to Jonathan who's like this like brawny, strong, very Straight honest type of guy, fighter. Yeah. yeah like a like, white knight. Yeah. Joseph is like the is like a scheming he's a very conniving. He's a rap scallion. He's a, a rap scallion, man. Just call him what he is. So we jump into New York, nineteen thirty eight. Massive time jump from part one. And we're introduced through Smokey, this like th- this other rap scallion. We're introduced to our new JoJo for this part, Joseph Joestar. Um, Can I, I just say, uh, they changed his character design, Smokey's uh, yeah. character design for the anime. He is somewhat unfortunately drawn in the manga. In the manga, somewhat it's racistly definitely. drawn. Uh, yeah. Somewhat. He's got the he's got the like the the stereotypical like big lips and everything. It's like, oh, oh, oh Rocky, you were not cooking. <laughs> Well, to be fair, it was done in a time where Disney used to do that, too. Like, 10 yeah, years prior true. to Rocky doing it. I'm glad they changed the character design slightly, though, because that would be very unfortunate. Yeah. It's kind of rough Thank to go God back David to these old mangas. Uh... Where, like, with the blackface, like, you look at some, like, Osamu Tezuka mangas from, 
the old days and it's yeah. ugh, it's unflattering <laughs> Uh, yeah, as, as, as much as I think that Osama Tezuka is a visionary and, like, a legend in the business, some of his stuff has not aged particularly well. It's not great. Um, this introduction with Joseph, with the, his, like, small fight with the cop, I think is, like, one of my favorite introductions of my main character. Just to see how, like, the guy is, like, the, the guy just... Like, he thinks so outside the box with the powers that we know how Hamon works in a very straightfor straightforward way. And then in, like, such a small scene, it's like, oh, I fucking used my magic breath to launch the the cap of my Coca-Cola right into his finger to smash it apart. And <laughs> it's such a clever and stupid way to introduce him. And it's all it all comes together thanks to Sugira, I think. Like, he's the main he anchor, sells I think, it. for this part b with his performance. He, he hardcore sells, sells it. it, yeah. I mean, he his personality is just the personification of Joseph. That's why it works so well. This is yeah. a, a question for you, John. Do you prefer Sugita as Joseph or as... Uh, um, eh, fuck, I'm blanking on his name. Um, Gitoki. Uh, Ooh. I'm... <laughs> Ooh. They're John, kind of the same from character, Gintama. to be honest. <laughs> it's not the it's, same. Uh, I prefer young Joseph because mm. Gintoki is funny, but he was not nearly as funny as, like, uh, because he's not supposed to be that funny. He's supposed to be kind of an idiot. Yeah. Um, and the serious roles and stuff for uh, Sugita, I think it works better in Gintama because the kind of character that Gintoki is supposed to be. Right. Like, he's the the white Typhoon? Is that what the hell is Isn't he the him? white samurai just called? I, whatever he was, yeah. I'll look it up. He was the, the guy who was like known as a monster on the battlefield, and it's like now he just wants to be a goofy dude who runs and does odd jobs, but gets pulled back into having to do things, and it's like most of it's comedy, and then there's the serious storylines, which are really good. But with young Joseph, it's like he's just goofy all around. He's never serious. Like Even mm -hmm. when it seems like he's serious, he's never serious. <laughs> He's called White That's what Yaksha. Sells, uh, sells me to him. Yeah, I feel like Sugit is a as a as a really good voice actor. I I think he sometimes doesn't get quite the credit that he deserves, but I feel like he is way more suited to the more jokester type characters mm. than the serious yeah, characters. He's definitely been typecast. Yeah. yeah. He Which can do funny, serious cause... stuff really well though. It's, oh, it's no. just he's... I mean, he's just a great voice actor. He can do he whatever is. the hell he, he's assigned. It's I can't imagine anyone else being young Joseph, to no, be perfectly I agree. honest. Like, one, one thing that I think the anime deserves credit is, like, I think it has perfect casting for the main yeah. JoJo's. I, 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 I can't imagine a different voice actor for any of them. Obviously, they were over the years, but, like, for the actual anime, I think they were perfectly cast. Um, I gotta ask, has anyone watched the English dub for this? Uh, I have, but I didn't, wa I didn't watch it for the rewatch that I did for this. It's been at least four or five years for me since I watched, I watched the English a dub. bit of it ages ago, and um, I don't think it's bad. I just like the the Japanese dub is so strong, especially with Sugita. I think it's just such a core for me personally, a core element of like the, my enjoyment of the of part two that it's very hard to top, no matter how talented. The guy who voices him in the dub is, which like is great. I'll I'll check, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a difficult competition. I mean, I know him, you know? I know Richard Epcar does old Joseph. Um, I can't, I don't remember who does young Joseph in part two in the English dub off the top of my head. But yeah, I, I the dub is I do, I don't I I do think if if like someone's like oh I prefer dubs I wouldn't say it's a bad dub at all. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we do jump to 1938. Uh, World War II is almost upon us, and we're in New York. And through the meet, and pretty much when we meet Joseph through Smokey's perspective, we get to know that he's been growing up with Erina, and we know that both his parents are dead, presumably, or yeah, we he's been alone with Erina for most of his life. And we know Speedwagon is also kicking around somewhere. 
and where he the true avails, best girl, the true best girl, where he feels a, a certain mystery, and we know he disappears uh, when a certain Strazo appears again uh, to pretty much attack Joseph and try and eliminate him, uh, which leads to the big first fight of part two, which is Joseph versus Trezo. I, I think it's kind of brilliant that last that part one ended with the fight with Dio, like this vampire character. And just to see, like, to sort of, like, reset the power scale of Jojo. They're like, oh, let's throw a vampire at Joseph from, from the beginning of the part. Mm-hmm. So this fight, I think, is, like, one of the more iconic fights in the part. Specifically, yeah, it's like, like back goddamn, that we it's have. the first, yeah. He it's pulls like out a gun and it's... grenades, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, to show, like, to, to really highlight what different characters uh, Jonathan and Joseph are, it's like Joseph, you know, he was straightforward. He would fight you in honorable one on one combat, no tricks or nothing. And, like, quite literally, Joseph predicted that he'd be attacked by some random stranger. So he pulls out a fucking Tommy gun <laughs> and just starts blasting straight up. <laughs> Like no fucking fair fight, no nothing. Just like I'm gonna blast him with my Tommy gun. I love how and for love good how measure, smoky. throw some grenades in there. I love how Smokey is used almost as an audience POV character because he's asking the same questions we are as the audience. Where was he hiding that Tommy gun? He's like the speed wagon of like this section of the story. Yeah, for real. It's like the same purpose. I love Smokey though. He's so funny. Well, it's funny because Smokey, I think, was originally. I, I read an interview that that Rocky did several years ago, where he was talking about Part Two, and I think when he was talking about it, he wanted Smokey to be a bigger part of the overall story. But I think his editor asked him to cut out like his involvement in the main story more, uh, because he thought his editor thought that the fights between Joseph and the um, the the pillarman were what he should be focusing on for the story instead of like this friendship between joseph and Smokey. i think, I think also, so yeah i, I, I feel like that's a that's a very because i mean the the pillarman fight is the best part of this like thing like the, oh, everything sure. from um acdc and wamu uh yeah and then there's cars we'll get to that one with cars, <laughs> but... <laughs> listen I, I don't know, man. Like, the highlight to me, it, it peaked a couple episodes before the end. <laughs> but yeah. That's my only complaint about part two, is that it peaks right before the end. <laughs> the Strezo fight, though, at the end, like, the end is what's so iconic about it. It's, yeah. It's like talking to Smokey, and it's like, what are we going to do? I'm going to use my... I, I saw him use his feet, so I'm going to use my feet, too. <laughs> it's a secret <laughs> technique that's been passed on for generations. <laughs> what are you going to oh. do with it, Joseph? Run away! <laughs> I love, I I love that he does that because it's like it seems like because the entire fight, um, just like in classic JoJo's fashion, is like I've outsmarted you, but no, I've outsmarted you because of this random bullshit. Well, I've outsmarted you. It's like straight so it's like, oh, you can't kill me because I'm fully vampire, and then it's like, oh, you can't kill me with sunlight because I've harnessed, or you can't kill me with hormone because I've harness this silk from this one thing that conducts hamon really well so i can disperse your hamon and joseph's mm-hmm. like my god he can't die and i can't use hamon what shall i ever do and it's like wait Run. i know <laughs> he runs and it's like Just it's all away. serious until he's like smoky <laughs> and you talk oh, about how, how like the, the like the 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 mind games like we talked about in the last episode about how near the end of the part we sort of got that, like the, the genesis of that with the fight with uh, Jonathan and Dio. And it's so cool mm-hmm. that you start reading part two or watching it, and it's from the get-go, it's like mind games after mind games after mind games to a ridiculous extent. And it's just like that for the rest of the part and the rest of the show, like for the next the rest seasons of as well. The entire franchise. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how from the beginning of this part, like you already get like the mindset that you need to get into this show. It's like, oh, it's going to be bonkers. It's going to be like mischief and just like Did crazy. JoJo's inspire Death Note? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we, ta- yeah, we talked jo- about uh, this. There wouldn't be Demon Slayer without JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there I wouldn't mean, be a lot of bro. things without JoJo. Oh, I mean, yeah, you you sure. kind of said it, though, Natai. Like, it's not only are the first few episodes of this part a great character introduction for Joseph. It's a great story introduction for the whole, what you're about to go, the journey you're about to go on. 
especially compared to like part one, because part one, I feel like the first three episodes, I was bored to death. <laughs> like it doesn't get to me. I didn't start getting interested until about, like episode five or six. Mm-hmm. Listen, when they show the rugby match, I'm fucking hooked from that point on. <laughs> I mean, big, hunky, muscly guys. Hell yeah. It's, you know, but um, so, yeah, part two, I, I, I love the beginning of part two. I think it's a great introduction. Uh, and it's it's also, I think, a great example of how, like, a main character can make a show, obviously, because just John Joseph's personality just shines through you know it's just like you can't you can't not enjoy his presence because he's such a like a lovable idiot but he's like such such a master manipulator as well um, i fully believe yeah. outside of uh all the the rest of the story beats his personality and uh him as a person is what really carries the show through yeah yeah so from new york after the fight with straight so he realizes that speedwagon has been kidnapped or something happened to him in mexico and we start to also get the general vibe of part two as we talked about how each part is like a different genre so when part one was like a like a victorian horror type of show we get to part two and it's just indiana jones you know and it's great yeah. it's great <laughs> um so when we do get to mexico uh we get introduced to one of the major factions in the story, which, uh, as we said, the Nazis. Um, I love how ridiculous and kind of stupid and arrogant the Nazis are portrayed in this part. So when you they're mean like, like in real life? <laughs> yeah, I know, I right? <laughs> so when they're like encountering this like fucking figure in stone or whatever, they're like, oh, I wonder what this is. They're like fucking with it. And, and Stroheim, their general, their like commanding officer, He's like, like anything would happen to us. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and of course, they have Speedwagon Capture, which is, oh, that's a shame. But yeah. And then, and then we're introduced to the actual best girl in JoJo history. Milf Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Tequila, Tequila Joseph. Joseph. Oh, Lord. It's great. It's great. Um, when... <laughs> So we will talk about the pyramid later on. Um, what did you guys think about like the introduction to like Santana, this new pyramid that we approach and like that fight that Joseph has with him, like that? Because that whole like, let's say like type of character like is very different from how we were introduced to like the vampires. So we get now we get to introduce yeah. to like this new type of monster we will see throughout this part. You know. I think it was super interesting and really started uh, setting up the plot and, like, eventual journey of all of JoJo, really. And I found it really cool. I'm like, oh, cool. There is an actual, like, deep lore backstory behind this. Yeah, the connection between, like, this stone mask that we have in part one to, like, now part two. It's like, oh, the stone mask they comes made from these. these. Yeah, yeah. The, they, this, yeah. whatever this creature is that uh, Santano is uh made it and then um <laughs> and then it goes back to the roots of like the victorian horror because then there's like all this body horror shit that happens yeah like, yo whoa. when he dislocates his joints to move through the air yeah. vents it was like yeah hey, yo, what the fuck man this is crazy i feel like with the the fight with um santana is it's interesting but it also feel especially once you see what comes after it with the other pillar men it almost feels like the tutorial pillar man fight yeah <laughs> Because it's also a struggle. Like, it's kind of... I, I love the, like, the climax of it, the well, when he realizes mm-hmm. that, like, the sun hurts him. So he, like, uses the reflection to, like, that he covers Jalurim in and then, like, the reflection from the, of the sun to the water, to the water yeah. in the well, like, destroys it. Yeah, it's like, it's high nude right now. You didn't know this, did you, Santana? <laughs> <laughs> oh... But it's but, a, the, but also uh, the whole thing where you, it's it's almost set up where you think that Stroheim is gonna sacrifice himself. But it's kind of but, but it's German. Like it's, it's German engineering. You can't stop German engineering. Or I medicine. feel like his characterization, though, how much like like he's such a ridiculous character. It's like it's like for the fatherland. Like it's, it's like it's so over the top. But like how he does like care for his men to some extent, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. It turns out he's not a complete dirtbag. 
because he's like willing to sacrifice himself to like get the um get Santana into the well. And like the lengths he goes to, like you know, fucking all the injuries he suffers through. It's like it's like holy shit, man. Like, cause part I've two gotta is be brutal. careful praising him too much. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna praise him too much. Just the... <laughs> we we, pra- we praise his character. <laughs> All right, we don't Not praise what his he party. represents. <laughs> Yeah. Shrime is a fictional character. He's not a real person. We do not endorse the inspiration for his character. <laughs> yeah, at all, at all. I. It is funny though uh, that you mentioned because the original version of the OP. So there's the set, uh, there's that one shot where you see him salute. So it was actually censored in the original broadcast. It was like just a big makes, shadow over yeah. him. That makes sense though. Yeah. 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 I don't blame him. Uh, I mean, yeah. At the same time, though, it's like it is technically period appropriate. So, so um, after the fight with Santana, pretty much, uh, Speedwagon sends Joseph on his way to to go train with uh, his master, uh, a, a certain Lisa Lisa, which we'll get to in a bit. But before he he meets uh, his master, we do come across. I think the other main key of this part, which uh, his uh, quote-unquote rival, you could say. Um, he was his rival, I would say. Yeah, classic shonen protagonist rival, yeah. Yeah, they, so before they they group up in Rome uh, to like further explore and investigate what's up with like the, the, like the origin of the pillar. They notice something like the Nazis discovered in the Colosseum. Uh, and beforehand, he meets... Uh, Caesar Zeppeli, uh, a descendant Shisha. of uh, Shisha. Shisha. So as we go with uh, with our uh, the Joe Star family tree, apparently it's also a Zeppeli family tree, um, and we slowly get introduced to this one of the key innovations. I think that part two doesn't get enough credit, which is like laying the groundworks for Shonen's being this like one of their mainstays, having is this like giant cast. Because, like, beforehand, and we saw with part one, basically, that shonen manga were, like, this one-man show. And so, like, you have your main character. He's, like, this big, like, strong guy. And it's basically his show and nothing else. Uh, and the more you delve into part two, you see how Araki is, like, interesting more and more, like, side characters that are, like, important for the overall storyline. And Caesar yeah. is, like, the first encounter we have of, like, a main side character that matters to the story and to the main character as well. It's funny because like this is one of I won't know, I don't know necessarily if it's the first shonen, but back then it was not common at all for shonen no. to have more than a handful of main characters, if that. And nowadays, you look at shonen today, they have absolutely enormous casts. Yeah. Yeah. Like not not like, just side characters, but actual main characters. And you look at something like like MHA, for example. There's like thirty main characters in that show. Yeah. So, yeah. And like, there part... is such a thing as too much. Yes, there is. <laughs> so it's crazy how like like JoJo so early on was like such an like it, like uh, innovating manga, you know, with like those like mm-hmm. concepts of like broadening what could be done with manga. So it's crazy how like it's still relevant to that matter. Uh, what do you guys think Which of Which goes to show, like, why so many anime do tributes and stuff. And, yeah. Um, yeah. To, uh, to Jojo's. it's so influential. It's, like, it's, it's, it's been so influential throughout the years. Like, I, I remember before getting into Jojo's, uh, the, seeing Jojo's references everywhere, all the time, yep. forever. You know, literally. It, was that a motherfucking Jojo reference? Like, oh, my God, the memes. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then it's like, once you think about like the time period in which JoJo's came out for the manga and you think about uh it's a f- like it it literally was the first to do quite a lot of things. Yeah. So it's it's been so innovative and it's ingrained in so many people like the whole rivalry thing like Naruto, think about Naruto like with Naruto and Sasuke. Would would Naruto be Naruto without JoJo's? It's a good question. Yeah. I would say it's no good. it wouldn't it really wouldn't be. I would say most of modern shonen would not be what it what what it is without JoJo's. Yeah, truly the godfather of shonen. In, in fact, off. the funny thing is, I don't see people saying, is that a JoJo's reference anymore? Because everything is. It's so baked in now. 
It also helps that when you wa- after you watch JoJo, your brain is just wired different, you know? <laughs> you can't totally ignore it, it references. <laughs> you can't ignore it after it. Um, That's very true. I, I do wonder, though, uh, jumping off what John was saying, do you guys remember the first time you encountered a JoJo's reference before you even watched JoJo in an anime? Where they like would do something with like, that's yeah, no game, no weird. life. That's yeah. the same thing for me, bro. That's, yeah, it's the same answer. <laughs> Go to what me. it is. No, it's just like I don't get this reference. <laughs> when Steph just like mashes her head against the one, she goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the JoJo's references in No Game No Life because I remember watching that back in 2016, 17, came out in 2014. 2014, yeah, like long time. So it was before I st- I actually watched JoJo's. What about you, Chinuda? I genuinely don't remember the first time I encountered a JoJo's reference. Uh, I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind for me too. Is No Game No Life, but surely with all the anime, because it's just rife with a lot gotta of JoJo be other references. There's so many. No I mean, Game No Life. Th- the funny thing is, I may have seen it before then, but just not realized it was a JoJo's reference. And not thought what about it ever said. again. Yeah. So yeah. Have to do but, a yeah. chronological rewatch of all the anime. The JoJo from, like, references. <laughs> <laughs> all the anime I've ever watched forever from 2008 until 2014. And then then I'll be able to tell you. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny. It's funny once you do watch JoJo and then you spot them. I'll never forget watching JoJo. Then after I start watching um, um, Snafu. And there's little like a moment where Hachiman's it's like maybe just like Stan user do you they they attract each other all the time like I get that <laughs> <laughs> I get it now <laughs> hey I, I get that reference <laughs> so as we talk we said so we meet Caesar a member of the Zeppeli clan uh, and we get to like one of the main uh, sort of like conflicts of part two which is like Caesar and Joseph's dynamic. Uh, when it's like Caesar's like the trained student of the Amon like uh, studies, and Joseph just kind of wings it because he does. He's not really a refined Hamon warrior. He just kind of goes by instinct. Yeah, like uh, Caesar yeah. takes pride in the fact that his family is a family warrior line of Hamon users, and hates the fact that Joseph is someone that they're all, they think they need him, but it's like, but this man like has not trained like me and this and that. And it's like, again, classic Shonen trope, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. you have the genius main character guy who somehow is the most strongest Hamon user. And then you have this guy who's, but Natural this is a guy talent. who's actually like, he, he wasn't born with amazing powers, but he's worked very hard to get there. Mm-hmm. And it's like the, the conflict between the two. And it's like, it makes a good dynamic. Um, and, just watching them bond and stuff together as they try to train their Hamon. I also watching them like, tower. give shit to watching... each other at the beginning. It's great. Yeah, yeah. watching them <laughs> just like do silly uh, rivalry stuff. It, it's so fun because like it's those building blocks of uh, friendship that they're doing. And it starts with uh, so I much hate it. and disdain. Like, <laughs> like, like Joseph literally sees him in the restaurant. It's like. This guy looks like a prick for no good reason, <laughs> just because he's like like hitting on this chick, and then he like uses him on to like strain out this like fucking pasta and shoots it at him. For because like I, I like how the show doesn't is not afraid of like portraying Joseph as just being just a dick sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, and it also like evolves into like their fighting styles. Like I love how. When they like start actually fighting each other in like eh, in Venice, uh, or no, not in Venice, in Rome. Um, there's like this moment where Joseph sees Caesar using like his bubble technique, and just for spite, he's like, "Well, I actually have my own technique as well." He's like pulling out the clackers, <laughs> which it, which is. It's gonna sound really stupid, but it's also like this trope of like, oh, through like when trying to outdo one another, he's like he's pulling his new, he's like learning new technique or he's like developing something to outdo his rival. It's, it's cute. Um, it's, that that's that's one way to think of it. It's cute. It's cute. It is cute. It is cute. cute. Yeah. Come on, Alex. You can't disagree. I would just say it's. I would say it's fun. 
I mean, you don't get a fun, kick out like, of seeing two manly too. big boys just like I won't go there. Not in the same way as you know. <laughs> I, I stopped. I stopped. Um, <laughs> so they're on their way to the Coliseum, and there we we get the the scene of part two, the iconic scene of the Pillarman awakening uh, with the 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 classic track. Would you care for a reenactment? Oh me! I yeah. I I. I, I. <laughs> 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 Man, Best when I first watched that, ever. that, the fucking uh, dubstep man, that 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 hit Aztec my soul. dubstep man is so cool. That track is like is is, is timeless. It's peak with its meme yeah. potential. Like I know, I know that we use that on this podcast probably way too much, and we say peak. This is literally peak. <laughs> it crosses I mean, this so is many. Like, borders bro it's incredible it's probably the biggest jojo meme that came out of like part two probably yeah because it's so insane either that or um your next line is i think awaken my masters is even bigger you see that way more often it's so much more memeable as well because that track is so like i'll never forget the first time i watch it i'm like what the fuck am i listening to and why does it work (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's the better it, question it works so well um so we're introduced to our main villains of this arc um which is the pillar man so acdc wham and cars or sorry Wamu uh and cars <laughs> and SCDC. SCDC. <laughs> i i think those i think the the villain names for this part are on point only only iraqi only Iraqi could take the letters A C D C and turn them into a fucking name. <laughs> and what Great a legend he is well. for it. Uh, yeah. And and there we get to see just how like incredibly strong the the A Pillarmen actually are. So they claim that Santana is like a, a newborn, he's like an he's like a baby. So he's He's like a that, baby. He's a baby so vampire. That's baby. why you couldn't speak at the beginning. Yeah. And uh, we see how, like, one of the best parts is when um, the pillman like, just walk, like, down the corridor or whatever. They just walk through that one, uh, that one German, not German officer. Uh, yeah. Was he a German officer or was he? Um, uh, I think all of the officers that are there at that point are German. I think he was yeah. German. Yeah. yeah. So when they just, just walk through him. Half. They don't even, sl- they, just by touching him, he's, like, just, like. He's like just dies. Just killed. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That moment is so cool. Also, a little bit of body horror going on in that scene. There's a lot of body horror in JoJo, especially in the earlier parts, uh, which is yeah. crazy. I'd say there's a lot of body horror after the first couple parts too. Like there's plenty in um. There's some in part five. Yeah, it's like there's plenty in part, in part, part four five, five. Just like brutal in terms of like combat, but but yeah, true. Right. Um. So we get to like. The actual confrontation with the pillar man and we see how dominant they are but we also see how like uh how how um uh valiant caesar actually is because we see how much like even though the odds are against him like he's trying so hard to to still like manage to survive this fight because he like you know he knows what what's at stake uh and then we also again back to that dynamic between the two of how we, we see Joseph slowly crawling away, and it's like we have this like <laughs> stupid scene. It's like looking away, the pillar like looking at him. He's still, but then when they look away, he starts running away. to be away. dead. <laughs> yeah, because he'll do crawling. anything to survive. Which he's is like crawling further and further away, and then the second he turns back, he's like, Ugh. <laughs> hilarious. Oh God, I love young Joseph so much. He's so funny, dude. He's so he's funny. built different, you know. <laughs> It's built different. Yeah. I, I love that whole section with just how terrifying because I think Jojo in general is very good with its villains. And I think mm. it's kind of quite unfortunate how when people talk about Jojo at large, sometimes the pillar men are kind of like they're like, they're fine. Like people seem to kind of like kind of leave it to the side. But when you think do go back to watch part two, is, I think the part terrifying. of that is because part 
with part one, uh, part three, four, five, six, so on, uh, there's like one villain versus the Pillar Man. It's like there there is technically one villain. Uh, it would cars is like the main cars, villain, yeah, the main but villain. Unit. But but the best part of the villains in the unit of the Pillar Men is obviously Wham. Like Wham, is so good. <laughs> his his fight is like the part that I love the most. And then you go to Cars after that, and you're like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. It's like the uh, best written AC... character out of the th- out of the three. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I would argue, yeah, this, unfortunately, this, this, I agree. This, this might be a hot take. But I actually think that Wham or Whamu is one of the best written JoJo's villains. I don't know about I, that. I don't know if I he's know best that, written. Chief. I mean, he's a he's very is he a sympathetic villain? I mean, he's not really he, much of a villain. You grow to respect. You grow him, to kind of yeah, respect him. Well, because it's like he honors the warrior's way, right? Like after the first encounter, yes, that he's an honorable code warrior. To yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, after he's the an first, honorable warrior. After that first encounter where uh freaking Joseph gets caught trying to run away and he's like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. See, the thing is, I'm much stronger than you, but I'm new to Hamon, so you have to give me like a month before mm-hmm. I can kick your ass. And if you respect the warrior way, you will let me live. And the freaking pillar men are like, we'll take that bet. bet. We'll take that <laughs> bet. bet. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I love it's like that. Joseph was just bullshitting the entire time. <laughs> and then when they leave, he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna, oh, fuck, fuck, what did they <laughs> yeah. do? Oh god, it's so funny. Which then it's like, leads it's like to, that, like... It's, it's, like, it's like that thing where you, you make all these plans, and then everyone just kind of goes their separate ways, and then you're like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> Which I uh, which then leads to the train section of part two, uh, which is which actually takes place in Venice, and then we act, finally meet Lisa Lisa. Uh, this which... whole thing was just a setup for part five. It's just it's just tutorial know, right? part five. <laughs> this whole thing was a setup for Rocky to take a trip to Italy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but um, back to Lisa Lisa. This also like I think I think just part two in general is like a such a cool case study just like how jojo is such an influential influential manga because again during those times most manga didn't feature like these like prominent strong female characters but then you see this lisa lisa character this like adult woman who by the time we meet her for the first time she she's kicking their asses she doesn't she's like they're nothing to her and she's Taking them under their under her wings to train them to help them prepare to fight the Pillar Men, and uh, again, like super influential with how women are written in manga in general, uh, which I think it's really fucking cool that they get to it. It's also I think it's kind of a cool uh, um, prologue to how Araki would write fights later on in the next parts with how one's strength and ability is not dependent on their physical appearance, you know? Right. Oh, this woman who supposedly seems kind of weaker than those muscly men, she's way stronger than them. So it doesn't matter, like, how tough you look, you know? Which is really cool. Yeah. I like it. Kind of um, goes back to the theme that John mentioned, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Definitely. It's yeah. All part two is about, dude. <laughs> that is part two in a nutshell. And then uh, definitely love Lisa, the, the, like, the training uh, when what they did get you thrown think down the into yeah. the so they get thrown down into that uh, the oiled pillar where it's like yeah um, speaking of pillars because because it's oil <laughs> yeah. then the only way to get across it is to learn how to control your haman and it's like Joseph doesn't know how to control that he has no control he has strong bursts of haman but he doesn't know how to actually like control it. So he's like about to drown and then there's Caesar who's like don't worry I'll get out of here and I'll I'll, I'll come back for you. And it's like they're trying really hard to get up there, and they eventually get to a part where it's like, okay, <laughs> freaking Joseph finds a shortcut, and he thinks, <laughs> oh sweet, I can finally rest, and it's like it's a trap. So it starts it's like the spinning, yeah, it starts the fucking the water jet the of water death is like trap. so like dense that it's sharp. It's yeah. Like... Okay. No, the uh, the oil is being sprayed out at mm. such a high speed that it's like a water jet. 
Yeah. Uh, so it'll cut things. And it's like, this is actually a really cool section because it's like, we see that Joseph has been in here uh, just as long as Caesar, but he's learned how to control his own to such a point that he can actually kind of catch up. You know, he surpasses Caesar. Because Caesar realizes his limitations of like, I may have really good hormone control, but he doesn't have that great amount of hormone in him, mm -hmm. which makes him put into perspective like, oh shit, okay, so Joseph may be a fucking rapscallion bastard, but he has innate talent for this, and he has to respect that. But we get to see when uh, freaking Joseph triggers that trap, we get to see how, how does Caesar deal with this type of trap? And it's like, well, because Caesar is who he is, he's a man about uh, discipline and training, he uses and musters up all of his skill that he's learned at this point to actually get through it. But then it's like, well, shit, Joseph doesn't have time to do that. And he's running out of strength as we speak. So what does he do? Because it's like, well, having this mask that's like restraining And he him. has that mask that, uh, to uh, help him with his breathing because he's like, because uh, he doesn't know how to control his breathing for Hamon. So it's like, well, we see his strength, which is I can quick quickly think up some random bullshit that might just work. <laughs> His, and it his shonen protagonist power comes into play here where it's like i'll create a hormon barrier i'll use the water jet to skitter to, <laughs> to the side to the and side. using it and i'll using that force it'll swing me past it without taking any damage the power of like, bullshit <laughs> and, and it somehow much. works and it's like dude that's but that's classic that's it, it shows exactly who our two main characters are right yeah. our two shonen protagonists that is just, it's great it's awesome it's great it's also also like yeah. how much like like detail we get like Jojo tends to do that when they like introduce something like kind of weird and they're like here's all the details how this works on a fucking scientific level and you're like okay <laughs> I buy that <laughs> just it may be bullshit but you made it sound really good that's bullshit but I accept it <laughs> and uh, right, and then we just get roll to, with it yeah and then we get to like the 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 cool so like surprising part of the training section is when ACDC shows up and ambushes Joseph during his train. Um, I think this fight kind of gets lost in the shuffle when talked about like the best fights in JoJo. I think this is a really fun fight um, when ACDC shows up. Um, I think it's a hilarious fight. Yeah, because of like <laughs> when the he pulls bullshit out the that goes on. Yeah, yeah, when he pulls out the, the crack beanie. thing and you, yeah, <laughs> when, when he chops off ACDC's head and ACDC's like, oh, I can't believe you do this. And it's like, I'm, he cries like a baby. That's like, I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm collecting Just myself. Just immediately snaps out of it. Oh, so weird! Such a weird fight. But it's one but, of those um, cases that jo showcases like the the classic JoJo fight of of you think you, you trapped me, but actually I trapped you in my trap that you thought you trapped me. Yeah, um, and it's like I see that you're spreading your uh, hormone string. I'm gonna cut it, and then it's like you fool, you didn't know that I double knotted it. <laughs> you, what you thought you cut was a magician's trick. You never cut the knots. <laughs> Yo, I just realized it's ridiculous. Absolutely I, I just, stupid. I, I just realized something about this like second half of this part that you kind of haven't brought up is that when um Joseph and company first like encounter the pillar men and they have the whole like agreement for one month thing, they put those the like, ring, rings the poison or rings. whatever. Yeah. The poison rings around different vital organs, right? Yeah. And yeah, like one on the heart, that, one on the lungs, or an, yeah, the, that the element throat. that element adds a definite sense of urgency to the plot. To and the I think that's that, yeah. one of the things that really makes the second half of part two really good. Which also is why I think that the the moment ACDC shows up such a cool moment because oh mm -hmm. it like accelerates the plot even more. It's like, oh shit, there's more at stakes because Literally, if he beats ACDC right now, he has way less to worry about until like the the poison rings around him. Yeah, um, he has one less thing. To but worry I, I kind of so my my one problem with the ACDC fight is that uh, eventually Joseph wins, right? But right. his trainer gets absolutely bodied by ACDC. So this just yeah. shows like yeah, Joseph is super strong when it comes to hormone power even though he doesn't have as a refined technique as like his uh, mentors and like Caesar and stuff, but his insane amount of hormone and his crazy, like fast off the wall thinking really yeah. saves the day there at the end. 
but it's like we we learned about the hierarchy prior to this where it's like okay well if santana is like down here he's a newborn baby we right. know that this is wham this is acdc and cars is at the top yeah so ultimately when our titular main character wins the fight it's like well he's stronger than wham then because acdc is stronger they than wham do, do they explicitly say that wham is not yeah. as strong as acdc they oh wait, because that the shadow moment, did. right? When he yeah. touches his shadow. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. This, uh, what did? He, how did he go? Where they like, um, Wham accidentally stood in ACDC's shadow, so he almost like killed him or whatever. He almost kills him. Yeah. He's yeah. like, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. So because I, it's, it's been like, so long, I forgot you hated that. <laughs> there's a hierarchy to their power level, so we That's know right. that ACDC is on top of Wham because Wham calls him ACDC Sama, like he's, he's yeah. Lord ACDC. So. That kind of like ruined it for me because I'm like, I kind of because you know I'm always thinking about what's gonna happen next. I'm like, I know what's gonna happen next. I know, I know exactly what's gonna happen next. Um, coming towards the next fight, like obviously if yeah. he beats ACDC now, then the fight with uh Wham isn't gonna be Joseph. Because I think they they claim that ACDC is more like a tactician, but Wham is like the warrior. So like you could right. maybe well, argue that Wham like is pure... a war like strength and brute force wham is well, wham more... is more interested in like and wham is very similar to jonathan where it's like yeah. he's a very straightforward guy like he has a warrior's resolve which we do see later which is actually super cool which makes yeah. us endeared to wham later definitely. on yeah definitely yeah it, it definitely feels like there wasn't as it, well even comparing the the fight with a acdc to both cars and wham it feels like there wasn't anywhere near as much time or thought put into this particular fight i right. think he, he focused more on the on the surprise and shock of like oh well shit. there's also like wham gets like more than one fight yeah he does yes he gets way yeah, more he yeah he does time. he, does. he, gets he has more way more screen time. time so he gets more time to be endeared to it's like the only thing we know about acdc is like he doesn't like people touching his shadow and i mean he feels great emotion one does yeah. yeah, as one does, and he feels a great amount of emotion, but then he can shut out that. Like after he gets it out, it's like he's cool. That, that that's, that's all we know about him. We don't yeah. know anything else about him as a character other than he follows Lord Cars, and he's like, yeah. "Oh, Cars, I will follow you, you to know, the yeah, end of the I world." Think, I, will... I think maybe. I mean, I mean, it's not to like justify it because definitely it's a more of a weakness of ACDC as a character. Maybe like the focus for Rocky was to create this moment of of like urgency as you said it's like mm. oh wait this is like this is like this expectation that's being like subverted it's like oh wait i thought we're in like a training arc and then suddenly one yeah, of like, the main like, bosses of the yeah, arc is, like, yeah, shows yeah. up it's, yeah. like, it's like this it adds this tension that's like yeah it's like we have like there. i think four more days for the training arc to end but it's like nope cut short gotta yeah. gotta yeah. fight the boss now which is yeah, you don't even you start off it. on the the lower tier you go to the mid tier right away just straight up immediately yeah it, it's funny that you call that a subversion of expectations because it definitely is. But it's also, I didn't even think about this. It is kind of a subversion of expectations that Wham gets more screen time than any of them, yet he's not the leader of the group. Cars is portrayed as the leader of the group and he gets less screen mm -hmm. time than either of them, really. No, he gets less. Screen no, no, time he gets Wham more than ACDC. But, but yeah, more, well, not as much as Wham. More... Yeah. No, 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 Wham no, is no, basically. Not as much. <laughs> like, as, I, but I you think he's definitely you think the most setup three like dimensional this, character out but, of the three. But yeah. you think with a setup like this, you'd expect for the leader of this group of antagonists to get the most screen time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And he he gets more screen time than ACDC, in my opinion, because at the end he has his like the whole monologue and stuff. Yeah. But uh before That's we get true. to that though, uh yeah, so after <laughs> Joseph somehow bullshits his way to beat an ACDC, <laughs> <laughs> then we magicians not trick and stuff. <laughs> Then we get to uh, to that like that episode cliffhanger where you see like ACDC's brain is like stuck. Oh yeah, back. the it's brain like... skeleton thing. It, it was, was like, yeah. so oh. weird, so Ooh. gross, it was so freaking weird. But and then I like how Joseph to... does not even fucking notice. It's like, oh, my shoulders are kind of stiff, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, whoa, 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 what's gonna happen? That leads though to one yeah. of my favorite uh, like memes that came out of part two where. Joseph, Joseph's like waiting outside Lisa. Lisa's like, I'll take a peek. And he sees like her through the, the keyhole and goes, Nice! Nice! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not only that, breaks the goddamn fourth wall, looks directly at us and goes, Nice! <laughs> I love that. Um, 
and yeah and then we during that whole like section we also get introduced to the MacGuffin of part two which is the redstone of uh of aja 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 um again back to the old indiana jones sort of like uh comparison again we have a MacGuffin that we will go after and it will be like oh um yeah apparently it's like some meteorite that came from a star or some shit and can harness the power of the sun won't be and... the last time a meteorite will be relevant to Jojo, right? <laughs> it won't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it won't be the last time something from space is relevant to Jojo's as well. And it's like, uh, oh. we know that Cars is looking for this because it's like, oh, why, why is, why do the stone mass even exist? And it's like because Cars realized that his people could become much more than just like people. They could surpass the sun. They're only one weakness. And he can unlock the full potential of the brain. So he created the stone mass, but realized the stone mass weren't strong enough so they could harness the power of the sun. So he needs this redstone of Asia to do it. And it's like, so why don't you just destroy it? And at least at least it's like, well, it's part of the prophecy that apparently this redstone of Asia is also what leads to their destruction to of Kars' people. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, well, then we can't destroy it. That's a shame. And it's like, I don't. Yeah, it's like that's a shame. It's like it's kind of it's, it's a weak reasoning in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like they don't even know how to harness the power of the Redstone of Asia to destroy cars or anything. They just know that some vague prophecy states it has to be uh, around. It, it's going to be used to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And also, which like, kind of is a it does correct prophecy. Yeah, because cause it, cause it does happen. To, it is technically yeah because they do yeah, claim it does that it's happen. Like, yeah, because just not in the way of... I think people thought it would. <laughs> This well, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy conduct, because yeah, this sort of tease that it can conduct like Haman powers or the sun, but it's like they're kind of vague about it at that point. Um, also, during that whole like introduction of the that MacGuffin, though, so we get to see Suzy Q, Lisa, Le uh, Lisa Lisa's assistant. Um, great Credence re uh, revival song, by the way. I love that song. Yes, <laughs> uh, I mean hell, uh, Asia is the is a great Steely Dan album. That too, yeah. <laughs> a lot of good references uh, in uh, part two. Um, so when Joseph is like on his way to see Lisa's Li Lisa, Lisa, <laughs> Lisa's Lisa, uh, they, <laughs> the ACDC's mind pretty much like takes over Suzy Q and through bullshit, she takes the Redstone of Asia and it just like delivers it to an unknown party that takes off with it. Um, as, and you then, do. as you do. <laughs> and then we get to uh, the chase after the stone, which after some bullshittery, we meet up <laughs> with the Nazis again with uh, our, our, our pals, you could say. Um, that introduction we get of Stroheim later on in that <laughs> section of the story is incredible. <laughs> Where he dislocates his shoulder and does like that. Which was absolutely Forget ridiculous. It's like, Stroheim, you somehow survived from being like, he was being, uh, Santana was like inside of his body and basically yeah. like, turned him it, like, into took him a or something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, didn't I tell you the might of German <laughs> science? <laughs> That's so Incredible. Stupid. It's just such a cool, iconic line. His voice actor oh. is hamming it up so much. And he's, yes. you can tell he's having a great time. I, yeah, I, for sure. I love that performance. Um, also, during that scene, we can we get a confirmation that Araki hates dogs but likes cats when Cars <laughs> saves the cat from getting run over. Yeah. So I, I found that funny. Um Man, animals in the JoJo's universe got no fucking chance. No. Wait well, I thought we that was more of like part. a scene to show that um, Cars is, a, is more of a sympathetic villain. More, he hates, than, he li likks nature more I'm than he hates yeah. humans, I think. Yeah, you know, he likes the natural like the order point. more than he likes humans. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was like the point of it. Um, we also I get don't know introduced... how much I would go for sympathetic villain necessarily but i can see where you're coming from for that yeah that's the angle that i saw it from of like why they would even uh why a rocky would even include this for mm -hmm. cars because like because then when we get later on like it, it cars is just like yeah i don't really care about um my people and i don't care about humans i just want I, to be I, able to transcend and live 
forever. I like your thought a lot better that it's it's probably trying to show off his love more of nature than of people. Yeah. There's also like a science uh, is like a science guy to some extent. Like he's obsessed with like potential for like his race to evolve and like become stronger and like more like like, like literally create the ultimate being. Um, and that, as we see later on, like that ultimate being is like very connected to nature as a whole. So maybe that has to do with it. Why we get that scene? Um, also, to show off his like powers. Uh, besides that, like his fucking blade hand that comes off, which is like, yeah, I thought it's sick. Um, oh, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Which, by the way, like in general, I think part two as a production, like it looks fantastic. Um, definitely yeah. it's it's like you know you know how it is with Jojo like sometimes it's like very like the animation is very stilted but the style is just oozing from all directions like the color mm -hmm. usage is incredible uh, I think like from part one to part two there's like a leap with how crazy they get with the colors in general which I love yeah oh. um, when we get to this stretch we are finally getting to I think one of the peaks of part two, which is uh, they know that when uh, the stone reaches uh, the pillar man, uh, and they know that it that the pillar men are like uh, like holding a stronghold in that mansion over there uh, in the are woods. They in Transylvania, is it no. that where they're at? No, I, no, 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 no. It's not. I thought it was no. like Switzerland. It's oh, Switzerland. they might. Yeah, they might be in Switzerland. They're in okay. Switzerland. Yeah. Um. And they reach this mansion, and basically, uh, Caesar thinking back to his roots, to his uh, like to his uh, 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 ancestors, his duty to like to like protect and like destroy this pillar man. He goes on his own to face them, and then we get to the fight between Caesar and Wamu, which is insane, absolutely insane. Um, what did you guys think of that fight as a whole? Uh, Alex, do you want to? Um, I thought it was really or good. John. Like I said, I was able to predict. I was like, okay, obviously Caesar's going to have to fight Whamu because that's if J Joseph beats ACDC, then in traditional shonen sense, then Caesar must fight Whamu. <clears throat> now, I predicted that uh, Caesar would narrowly win this fight with Whamu. And it seems like he almost narrowly wins, except he doesn't. And it's <laughs> like, oh, fuck. <laughs> The first, like, shonen death. And it's like, no, no, this is where that trope comes from. <laughs> that death to kill off a character. Insane. It's so good, though. It's so good. Uh, yeah. Like, Caesar it's trying iconic, to... It's iconic. Like, know. using his, uh, like, I have my new improved Hamon bubble technique. And it's like, that means nothing to me. I have mastered the wind. But it's like, what you don't understand is that... Uh, I'm able to use Hamon in a in a bubble that goes past your wind. It can't be affected by the wind. It's like what? What does that mean, Caesar? I love one was horn. <laughs> so silly. He got horny. Ugh. Oh, that's bad. But that's um, sorry. yeah. Then uh, when finally it's like. Whammy was somehow able to like pull off his major twister power, even though he wasn't able, to, he wasn't supposed to be able to, but he still did it because of reasons. Uh, because he was able to twist his like arm back or whatever the hell it was at weird angles. It's like, oh god, that's right, I'm fighting a pillar man that doesn't conform to regular anatomy. Anatomy, like, yeah. How, how did you forget that, Caesar? Like, <laughs> he got too full I, I, of himself. I thought you're... That's like the 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 crux. Yeah, of the I, fight I get as that. Well. Uh, but. You know, at the end when Caesar is like, I'm not going to make it, so I'm going to leave it all to you, Joseph. I give you the rest of my hamon, and he protects it in the hamon bubble. And it's just like, oh, no. Because he, uh, he was like, I'm going to at least make sure that Joseph doesn't die. So he, he does everything in his power to get the antidote from Wham. And he seals it in that hamon bubble. And it's like, after the battle, it's like, all right, Caesar's dead, and Wamu's alive, but Wamu sees the bubble and is like, so that's what this was all for, huh? To just like, you know, all of this for a, a drop of blood. But it's like, that was Caesar's legacy. And it's like, Wamu was like, I respect that. So in accordance to your bravery and this fight, I will honor your wishes and leave that alone. And it's like, damn. Damn. Wamu, you're kind of cool, bro. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of nasty. Truly a warrior. 
Yeah. That's what I love the most about this fight is like the end where you kind of, if you haven't realized it yet, you definitely realize by the end of this fight, damn, he's kind of cool for an antagonist. He's pretty <laughs> yeah. all right. You gain a level of respect. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like, it's been said before. And I think we talked about it a lot, but like Caesar's death scene, I think is one of the best one in Jojo's. Um, just that like yeah. the, the impact hit. <laughs> That it has it's and earned like, it's an yeah. earned death and it's 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 also a stark contrast like from part one how they write death as more i don't know if to call it realistic but more like it feels like it, it has more impact when it's so like sudden you go you don't get the the hollywood beautiful goodbye like oh they get to right. say their last words and yeah. close their eyes and you know, all that tearful tear jerker scene it just that's that's one of the things that elevates it. it for me yeah same. that, that, well, that elevates it like, for um, me then we have all the the fake out deaths from the beginning of part two right yeah. <clears throat> where we're like oh god speedwagon's dead it's like nope he's not nope, dead. he's all right and it's like oh god stroheim is dead nope he's not dead <laughs> like the heck so yeah, and compares to this where he's oh my god Caesar's dead he's actually fucking and dead it's just he's dead. actually dead it's like oh that sucks it's and then that good. scene when um Joseph and Lisa Lisa go and find Caesar but then the light comes down and they find like that's where his body it's was amazing. buried it's like oh it's such a good scene it's such a good scene it's so yeah. it comes together so well with like the the lighting as you said and the music and so he does oh my god the music hits so hard so, in in that yeah, scene and then Lisa Lisa like like telling Joseph like oh we can't uh we got to keep moving and, and he just, she's like uh trying to act keep cool it together. And it's like Lisa, yeah. Lisa Lisa your cigarette's backwards <laughs> it's like oh she feels it too oh she's trying to be like the stoic character and she can't do it it's one yeah. of my favorite lines, like, your cigarette's backwards. <laughs> Georgia to the end. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a great... It's probably one of the best parts. I, I think, like, I, I won't... Uh, I totally get when some people would say it's one of their favorite parts in Georgia in general, because that whole, like, back and forth that Caesar and Wamu have, it's, it's so intense, and it's so... And, and it's so it, it's a struggle and just the conclusion of it is so tragic and it's so it, it just as i said it just like he dies and that's it you don't get like a goodbye for him you don't get any like closure he just dies and, like the closure is definitely that uh, like the red bubble which there's a cool foreshadowing of it in the op which is awesome but yeah it's awesome uh, it's a great sequence um and then it leads to the actual fight between Joseph and Wamu. Um, I, Let's I, go. I, yeah, Let's go. I, I do want to pull. So I found, I found this interview between Araki and Nisio Ising, the writer of Monogatari. They had a long time ago. Um, and there's a cool section about this fight that they talk about. So Nisio Ising asked Araki in part two, do you just come up with the idea of the battle with Wamu to, to be on the chariots? And Araki answers, no, I think I was inspired. In shonen manga, I like when the battles are one-on-one -on -one in some kind of arena. This arena could be a narrow cliff top or one where you lose if you, have, if you leave the arena. And it's fun to make a lot of, of rules. I think that's where the idea of the chariot bell came from, having some restrictions so it's not everything goes. Um, which yeah, I've... see, and I, I really like that concept yeah. because, again, we know that Joseph is stronger than ACDC, who is stronger than Whamu. So we know that in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation, Joseph should win. Yeah. So putting it in this Coliseum with all these different rules, it's like, okay, now this is more of a fair fight. Yeah. Which I, at first, I was like, I don't know if Joseph would agree to that because, like, again, he's a rapscallion. Like, he, he, he would never agree to a fair fight. <laughs> he only agrees to fights that he wins. <laughs> But but I, yeah. I think what I like about that interview is like because you see that exactly the the sort of like a, a like um the actual this is like the almost the premise of stand battles which we'll get in part three onwards you know it's like without it's uh, having some restrictions so it's not everything goes you know it's kind of crazy how even back then when he was still using Hamon as like the battle like technique for his manga tour like like this is the cool thing about this manga he was still going through with this mindset 
of like the restrictions and how these restrictions create these unique and cool scenarios. Um, would highly it recommend looking like up a this prototype German, stand battle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it is really actually, cool. yeah. I never even thought about it that way, but yeah, it is kind of like a prototype stand battle. It's really, really sick. Uh, would highly recommend checking out this interview, by the way. It's really, really interesting. Uh, I but will yeah. make sure to add it uh, linked below in the comments. That's a great idea. Uh, so yeah, the actual fight between Iwamu and Joseph. Uh, so he challenges him to a chariot battle. Um, we also get our first uh, usage of CG in the anime, actually proper, not talking about the OPs. Um, I don't think it looks bad. You can tell it's there, but I don't think it detracts from the actual, the this entire sequence. Um, no, I, don't I, know I what thought you it was guys... fine. Like yeah. it's supposed to be in a three D arena, and they're supposed to be running around in a in the Coliseum. Yeah. So it's like it has to be. Still like holds that. up, I think. I yeah, don't think I, it's a I mean, detractor. Yeah. I think the main part of this fight wasn't like watching them travel around in a circle. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that Joseph has a weapon. How will he use his weapon to beat Wham? And then Wamu yeah. can counter it and do this and other shit. Like he has the wind power. Yeah, yeah. I like I how think, the weapons yeah, are being I, hung I, by I, the <laughs> vampires on the side all the time. Like just yeah, a little yeah. detail. I'm I, I'm with John though. I don't think I think because this fight is so well thought out and well planned out by Iraqi himself, I feel like the fact that it's CG doesn't detract or parts of it are CG doesn't detract from my yeah. enjoyment of it at all. Even though I can definitely tell it's there. Yeah. Yeah, because we're back to our typical shonen bullshit of like <laughs> I use this trap. No, you fell for it, you fool. I can counter with this. Well, you didn't think about this. And I'm more it, invested in that than just course, the visuals. Yeah. Did you like the vampire horses? That I was kind of cool. completely man. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that, that was cool. I loved it. And, uh, like, my first thought was, oh, they're going to... Someone's going to cheat somewhere. But then it's like, no... Wamu would never allow that because he's so honorable yeah. that he was like, look, I have tamed, we have tamed these vampire horses. They will listen to you. And it's like, oh, they, and it's like, as you would expect, like most villains are underhanded and they pull some fucking shit. Wamu does not in this entire fight. He fights fair and square. The entire and then time. when, when cars like sees the tides turn and he's trying to sway the fight and just like cheat the fight, Wamu doesn't like, he's not into that. No, you know, he he's he's it's like like severely against it. Yeah, because again, Cars is like he's truly the villain of this arc, uh, because he's the leader of the villain troop, and he doesn't really care about honor, but he cares about results, which is true. Like it throughout his entire exposure that we know about him, like with this uh, making the mask, destroying his entire civilization because they're all scared of him. He cares about results, right? Versus Wham, uh, Wham was like honorable guy and they they all reinforce this from the beginning of being introduced to the pillar men like each of these characters of the pillar men are uh their values are reinforced each time we see them yeah which is a great yeah. thing also, they're kind cars of like, like uh wham wham and and uh cars are kind of opposites in that regard like, like you said cars is very much a ends justify the means kind of person whereas mm -hmm. wham is more of a means justify the ends Ooh. Yeah. Actually, that's a, yeah, yeah, no. That's... Also, like, I think the cool thing about cars is like they don't delve into it that much, uh, like they like they don't like overly state it, but I do think it's cool how cars is very much like Joseph in terms of he's also a conniving type of fighter. He's also a very cunning character, and he's very using underhanded tricks, and he has his like his own way of fighting. Not necessarily <laughs> his 500 IQ giga chat brain, like 5D chess moves. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, I, I think it's cool how like. Or like they chose uh, the villain to be as cunning as Joseph is um, instead mm -hmm. of being like a sort of a straight kind of like like Wamu right. being like an honorable warrior, which brings out the honorable side of Joseph, by the way, because by the end of their right. clash, like yeah. Joseph, Joseph respects doesn't Wamu. Cheat. Yeah, he doesn't like he respects Wamu and like they almost see eye to eye. Um, it's a shame his head is decapitated, but it's whatever. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, 
I say Joseph doesn't cheat, but he does use the uh, arena to his advantage. That... He doesn't. Um, he does underhanded tricks still because you know he he's a scrappy dude and he has to come. He has to be creative of how he beats. Uh, but he's doing Wham it within the bounds of the rules that Wham has set. Yeah, correct. Uh, but yeah, at the end it's like Wham loses, but instead of instantly finishing him off, it's like uh, I'm gonna let you have your moment. <laughs> Like yeah, I was I respect you as a warrior. It's like that was cool. That was pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Which is why was I was awesome. so disappointed with like the cars fight because I'm like this was such a good fight because I like I came out of this with respect for Joseph and Whamu. Like this was a great fight. It was great themes and I was like how how is the titular villain gonna top this fight? And that's why I was a little bit disappointed with the with the fight with cars because it's like oh. It's more of a spectacle, a spectacle kind of fight. You yeah, know? I don't think it's, it's as... more. It's definitely a lot like more of a spectacle because of like yeah. the whole ascending thing and like you know fucking rabid squirrel rabbit or where the fuck it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a squirrel. Yeah, bro, bro, squirrel. it ends in a volcano. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> it's it was fucking stupid. Tekken that match. Stupid volcano, bro. That's it's like yeah, it's ass. like a Tekken match. <laughs> oh, we are yeah, gonna... after um... so after like he he beats Wamu so basically. And he takes his ring. Um, basically, he like confronts confronts cars. And at first, it's very kind of a straightforward. Oh, we fight. didn't mention that. Uh, so, he, because Caesar sacrifices life to get Joseph that last uh, antidote, so that way he wouldn't right. die. Joseph promises to, on his honor, not to take the medicine until he actually beats Whamu. Yeah, which he he agrees. Like we, he keeps to. And he keeps it, that is, promise. Yeah, he keeps that yeah. promise, which is cool. Yeah. When you look at Joseph at the beginning of the part, he he wouldn't have done that. He probably yeah, like, he would have like fuck that and just drink it. I yeah, think it's like... a really beautiful telling of his evolution as a character. Yeah, like he doesn't like it's not a substantial character growth, but it's like it's very subtle and but it's still satisfying to look back at. It. It's like oh yeah, like he was affected by it, whether it's Caesar or even Wamu, like the people around him, um, which is awesome. Um, so this does lead to like the final stretch of the part where we get to the first encounter with cars uh which... where we meet again the might of the german of german engineering <laughs> fucking ultraviolet lights yo strohheim coming in clutch more than once i will say all the yeah. time strohheim True. truly strohheim True. was the backbone of part two we all just didn't see it I fucking love the ridiculous getup of like the Nazi soldiers, like with the big ass lights on their the shoulders, like, yeah, the like aiming at the, the backpack the, UVs, aiming at the, the vampires. Also, oh, Smokey and Speedwagon yeah. show up finally. Yeah, for for some yeah, reason, for some reason, to, to give like, us commentary. Yeah, it's like shit, guys. We need commentary. On, I mean, on to be site. fair, to be fair, we have Speedwagon doing what Speedwagon is good at, providing fight commentary. <laughs> Like, oh Speedwagon truly is the Joe Rogan of JoJo's. Speedwagon be like a buddy of mine. <laughs> yeah, he is a major oil tycoon. He probably has a buddy that like his. Yeah, a few, a few. I mean, I will say about Cars, he's he's a really good air guitarist. You know. Which leads to one of my kind of like I don't know if it's kind of disappointments with part two that Lisa Lisa is built up as this like incredible warrior and yeah I guess she chops some vampire heads like that but then the moment she faces cars he like she's just a jobber he he, he knocks the yeah, shit out of her I like know. that bodies like, are... and then she exists as like um we find out that Lisa Lisa is actually Joseph's, Joseph's mom and it's yeah. like oh yeah and we actually learn the story she's behind like oh yeah she's a milf wouldn't that make her over 50? Like, we don't talk about that. <laughs> well, but then that makes sense, though, because Straitzo was, like, chasing youth, and it's like, if you harness the power of Hamon, you can keep your youthful. Even though you were 50, you could still look like you're 30. But um, a, I like this revelation, by the way. Like, I think it's a really cool twist. John? Wood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, Lisa, most people Lisa, agree. Being just like she's supposed to be the master of Hamon, you know, she's st she was raised by Straitso this entire time, so she should be a master of Hamon, just like Straitso was. 
and yet just kind of falls short and gets bodied by cars. And it's like, she didn't do anything. That, that is something moment. that kind of, I found disappointing too, because it feels like that only happens to, to move the plot forward. Yeah. It, it feels be- like it only happens. It's to add tension. Cause it's like literally like, she's about to, she's like, she's like, like there's that moment where, uh, she's like, uh, she's like caught on like like uh cars is about to let her go and then joseph's like oh, i need to jump on this to keep her afloat and then speedwagon shows up well actually she's your mom <laughs> <laughs> it's so like it's, it's kind of like the silly. ultimate your mom joke <laughs> pretty much like i do like the backstory of like how the joe star of bloodline is like forever cursed for tragedy so joseph's dad was like killed during the war by an officer who was actually a vampire it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then Lisa Lisa. Like, Which, by the way, you can read about in the George Joestar light novel. That's right. <laughs> oh, shit, Did you really? actually read it? Yes. I have read it. It's Did you like it? Interesting. <laughs> no, that's it's not, not good. written by Rocky. It's not <laughs> yeah. written by Rocky, oh, okay. and you can oh. tell. Would you care for like a 60-second quickie of review of it? Um, it's about George Joestar and his exploits during World War One and how he came to die, essentially. Which you see a little bit of that in part two, obviously. You see the the like the end of his life. Mm. And yeah, he... that whole light novel is like showing the buildup of how that happened. Mm. Okay. But Would you... it's interesting that Rocky didn't write it. Like, I, how did someone else just write? Is, is it like fanfic or is it like a no? It's probably like I mean, it, it's by it's him. officially licensed and stuff, but oh. um, and it's like approved by Rocky. Um, like fun fact: novel. Nisio Eason also wrote a JoJo's Light novel. That's <laughs> no true. fucking way, really. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I forget, I forget which one, but I know he he did write one. I'll, I'll, I'll so would you recommend the Georgia uh, Light novel? I would I would recommend it if you want a more complete like story more than what's given in part two of George Joestar's life. Yeah, because at the end when they they shoehorn all that in, like Lisa Lisa's your mom. This is how actually your uh your dad died. Uh, this is the story of Straito and raising Lisa Lisa, and it's just like this is all shoehorned in in like ten minutes. <laughs> there was no build up yeah. or lead up to this at all. It's like there was like, a bit of mystery. I, was, info dump. Because it's just I like mean, info dump. To you be know? fair, there was a bit of mystery because we never got like the answer for like like the baby from the end of part one that Arena carried and which we yeah. All, all we know that... was that um, Arena said that the her her son marries that baby. That like, baby. We, that's yeah. all we knew about that. But we didn't know just what a, happened to that baby. Just a quick side note. So Nisio is indeed write the Jojo novel by the name of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Over Heaven. Um, Over which, Heaven. Yeah. Which is uh, 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 related to some aspect to part six. And I won't explain anything further about that oh. until we get to part uh- six. Uh, Bro, mm-hmm. scrolling through you, there, there's no quick way to scroll through Nisio Eason's like writing history. Jesus Christ, this man writes so goddamn much. This man much. That will never stop writing until he. His his we Wikipedia page is so fucking long. But yeah, uh, if you are curious about it, it's related to part six. So look for it at your own risk. Uh, we will maybe mm-hmm. re- circle back to it when we get there. But he did write that novel, so that's. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Over Heaven. Uh, back to the final section of part two. So uh, we do get that whole, like, tying that on a little, like, little storyline of the baby that Arena saved back in the end of part one. So that was Lisa Lisa, who will become Joseph's mother. Um, I do like that tie back to the end of part one. And I do kind of enjoy that they kept it, like, under wraps for a long time. Even though it does come at the last second, I think it's, like, a cool, like, way to close that bit of mystery um and then we get to by the end of that like small encounter where cars is kind of defeated but not really and they're like oh, get all this uv light on him so he can't move at all and it's like oh it's done it's over and it's like uh-oh where's the stone mask where's the where's the stone of asia and then in, like it cuts to his like body and it, it lo- turns back and the mask is on his face and he has the stone. Um, that transformation sequence to cars becoming the ultimate being is nuts. 
It was Ooh, epic. Yeah. Shit. nuts. Yeah. I love that when like his hand becomes a squirrel and then he like leaves his body and then he sees a female squirrel and it's like, oh, get over here. And then he fucking <laughs> eats it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Freaking horror, dude. The Victorian horror is back again. Yeah. I love it's Victorian terrifying. body horror. I have to say it is out of this world. JoJo's does it well. Do you agree that Ultimate Being Cars is way more interesting than regular cars? In terms Certainly of like more entertaining. Yes. And like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because it's just way even crazier than usual. Because he's a very restrained villain. Because he's like kind of like, ooh, he's like shadowy. And he's so like, you know. Cunning. And then like my favorite part of this section <laughs> is Joe's is Joseph going, there's only one technique left that we could use. And it's like, oh. There we go. Bring it do it. <laughs> Bro, the, the best part of Joe Star technique. The best bit of that entire part is when they're like, he's the ultimate bean. And then he cuts to him, like holding his like fucking underwear cloth, like that. His <laughs> hair is like flowing in the wind. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Muscle oh, glue. Oh my god. Um, yeah. This entire fight is like, we said it's a spectacle, but I do like. I do like how crazy they go with, oh, he can change into any type of animal, like with the wings. Yeah, he can and morph he, his body now to he anything he wants. He morphs his body, like, yeah. however he wants. And I, it, it, it does get creative, like, when Joseph flies the airplane, uh, and then he uses, like, he shoots his, his uh, like, feathers at him, but then turns him into, like, scales, I think it was, to, like, shatter his airplane. It's, like, crazy sh stuff. Like, the fuck? Um, I yeah, do think I, it's a really entertaining honestly, fight. Honestly, I fully believe if like if they didn't manage to defeat him, he would have fucking done it. He would have taken over. He would have been on top, bro. But then we get to the actual climax in the volcano, uh, with Stroheim aiding Joseph. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like again Stroheim showing up. Like coming, I knew what you clutch. were thinking, Mister Joseph. So I hid inside of your plane. <laughs> So I could assist you right now. And it's like, Strohheim, if it wasn't for you, the world would have been doomed. Not to save the world, confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that section when, like, like cars falls into the volcano. They're like, oh, we're fine. We're good. And then they explain what he does to, like, sort of, like, save himself from the lava. How he creates, like, this bubble surface. Oops, sorry. Bubble surface around him to, like, sort of, like cover himself in like type of I, I don't even he had like I, an exoskeleton that was able to like had an air an air barrier so that way the heat wouldn't kill him right away which gave him yeah. enough time to like crazy shit, man. through some stupid bullshit about how he can survive being dipped in the lava and then it's he, like how it's he evenly dissipates the heat over his entire it's body or some shit absolutely ridiculous and then he looks guy over Joseph I, I read somewhere online, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but apparently there was someone who dipped their hand in lava to see what it felt like. Oh, my God. And obviously, he lost his hand. Uh, yeah. And he refuses to elaborate on what it felt like, even I, though he's I know like, exactly I wonder what, what the only person about. who I've ever that. Yeah. put their hand in lava. John, I'm going to tell you exactly why he doesn't elaborate, because he came when it happened. That's why he doesn't elaborate. <laughs> why would you say that? I don't that? know about that. Why would you say that? Because it's the only is... reason you wouldn't elaborate about that. Because it was to this conclusion. Why would you? I what? just think it's hilarious. It's like you know what? I know exactly what it felt like, but I'm not gonna tell anyone. So it's like, well, shit, dude, what the hell? <laughs> no, Fine, I don't want to dip secrets. my hand in lava. <laughs> keep your secrets. Yeah. That's such a bad way to go about it. Because then people will be like, well, I guess I'll find out for myself. I mean, I I'm good, dude. I, that's something I don't need to know the sensation of. I'm Am I curious? Yes. Do I need to know this? No. <laughs> like maybe if I was dying and there's a lava flow right there, like why not? But, but yeah, at this uh, at this point, it's like, all right, we've tried dipping him in lava. This is not good enough to like take out cars. So what can we really do? And it's like, I know. <laughs> we'll blast him into we'll blast space. Blast into space. <laughs> They team rocket. And it becomes him. a trigger anime. <laughs> I know, right? I that that part with them like, like they like the explosions happening. They keep getting fucking um just like fucking smashed away to space. Further and further, further into and further. space. Yeah. And I love that moment where Cars is like, 
Jojo, did you fucking plan it all along? And Josie was like, that will just <laughs> of make Of course him... I did. Of course I did. And Daenerys is because, like, Because, like, Cars like, up to this point is him. doing that whole Joseph thing where it's like, your next line is... And then, uh, so that Joseph is like getting like, oh fuck, he knows, he knows what I'm thinking. I can't, I can't out, uh, outthink this guy. I'll and then him. finally, when the the tides turn, Joseph is able to be like, your next line is to cars and cars like, oh my god, he's Johnny. planned it this entire time. <laughs> and then it's like truly inside of his head is like, fuck, well, who could plan this? You crazy ass. I love, that the, I love that the narrator is like, Joseph did not plan this at all, but I knew it will fuck with cars, so he said it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It was great. It's so good. Then you get like the, the, the one of the most like kind of like dark Eddie for a villain where cars is launched into space and he's like slowly trying to come back into Earth orbit and then he just like freezes in place, but because he's immortal. He can't die, so he just like stuck in that form forever with his thoughts until he could never couldn't like think until anymore. like a millennia passes and then he decided never to think ever again. Like and that's like, a dang. fucking dark shit. It's extremely dark. Yeah. Bro, all I'm saying is you could write a JoJo story like millions of years in the future. He just returns as one of the ancient ones. Oh no. Oh, that'd be so cool. That would be cool. <laughs> like a fucking Lovecraftian villain. I do think like the end of Cars as a villain is like it's like I, I I do it elevates the character for me that whole ending with him yeah you know yeah I felt like I the think... ending for um uh, for Cars is it's epic like it, yeah. everything up to this point was epic but I I just didn't feel as much as an emotional attachment for sure like I did with the the Whamu fight yeah yeah it's more like a like again it's like the, it's a, the spectacle of like we get to the right. final boss yeah and, and yeah. In general, with part two, when you get to the end of it, it does feel like Araki sort of like stretched that Hamon uh, power system as much as he possibly could. So to go out in a bang like that is like, it's awesome. It was epic as shit. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree yeah. with John. I didn't connect it with Cars as much, but I thought his ending was so fucking metal. I was like, it's yo, this is well, fucking yeah. badass. Yeah, but so then uh, at this point we're like, okay, so Joseph's dead, right? We also we sort of um, expect the, the 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 death to repeat, just like with Jonathan. Uh, yeah, right. Then we enter yeah. the epilogue of part two, uh, and we get to the funeral, um, and of course, like everyone's there and they're crying, and then we get to the of course we can hear him coming along. It's like, ah, what what's everyone doing here? It's like. It's like it's like, sir, please, there's a funeral here. Be respect be respectful, my ass. <laughs> and it's Joseph, and he's alive, of course. He's alive. He's like, what, Joseph? Can and I then he say does how the cool it is like, to show up at your own funeral. <laughs> what an asshole. It's like this entire it. time, it's like, oh yeah, I survived falling back into the Earth's orbit because of some random fucking bullshit about falling near the ocean and able to survive but then uh is all fucked up so he's taken care of by Susie q and it's like Susie q is like what it's like oh yeah like, they're married. I, you guys didn't know i got married and everyone's <laughs> it's like, like what everyone's like Absolutely wait how come you wild never shit. how come you couldn't contact us and he's like uh, i i definitely asked Susie q to talk to you guys about it and he he looks back at her and she's like oh Oh, Did I guess you? I forgot. It's Whoops. like Susie Q. <laughs> <laughs> Susie Q is like that scene from uh, Trigon. Eto. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I was busy getting laid. <laughs> that dynamic you know, I, you know thinking so about that, th that plot line to end it off would not work today with all the like instantaneous communication we have. Yeah, this Obviously. is supposed no, to be like right after World War Two. So like. No, it's it's well right, right it's during World War Two. It's nice. Right no, it's 38, not. 39, yeah. Right before World War Two. But yeah. Um Yeah. So yeah. like I mean they had obviously they had telephones back then, but the still the primary communication long distance was writing. Bro, bro, nothing right. was self stupidity. I'm sorry. I love Susie the Q, but like nothing could help her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. She kinda dumb. <laughs> Uh -oh. um, but then we get to... It's a, it's a good thing you're pretty, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get, like, the... Pretty much, like, the epilogue, like, section of the story with us learning that, yeah, like, Joseph and Susie Q, like, have a family. 
and then we get a, like a like sort of a small Another... goodbye for the minor characters like Smokey went and became a, a politician to fight for mm. like uh, human rights and I love the bit with He will Steve. have a cameo in part 3. Smokey? Mhm. Mm he has a visual cameo in part 3. Seriously? Does I don't remember really? that. Mhm. Mm oh my god. I'm going to look I'll point I'll point it out when we talk about it. But... Sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite tidbits is the uh, the the end of uh, Speedwagon, which is kind of sad. But they're like, he's like he 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 went he 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 stayed alone for his the rest of his yeah, life. Yeah, he never got married. He never like, got oh, married. Sucks. It's like I can't believe they left him a virgin like that. <laughs> Whoever said he was a virgin? <laughs> like, yeah, they never said that. No, I'm kidding. I'm they kidding. just my boy is pure, uh. you know. Uh -huh. Oh, that's true. Pure-hearted, pure-hearted, pure -hearted. truly a gentleman, truly, truly a gentleman. gentleman. Yeah, yeah. He, tr he stayed true to his one true love, Jonathan. <laughs> you know, to, yeah, <laughs> to, to, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. To this, to this day, I am still surprised that Iraqi uh, resisted the urge to put some kind of other speed wagon like family member in other, in another part. He should have. Yeah. He should have. Because like, like, just because he never had kids doesn't mean he didn't have like you know brothers or sisters or nephews or whatever cousins. Listen, yeah. he left us the Speedwagon Foundation. Exactly. So, yeah. Good enough. So they do talk about like the forming of the Speedwagon Foundation, which would be like a core aspect of like the rest of JoJo's for like the future parts. Uh, and mm -hmm. then we we get to to. A great way to end part two with uh, a great a and years later, another great meme. Yeah, a gr another years great later meme. in the future, <laughs> we see an older Joseph, a gruff year so, uh, Joseph, uh, in in an airport in Japan, bumping into Japanese uh, Japanese men, and he's like, "No, oh, he's at JFK International in New York. Oh, he's, he's going to Japan. You're right. You're right. He's going to Japan, and then he's bumping into this one fellow." And he's like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, where are you from? Ah, oh, I'm from Japan. I want my sorry back. Fuck you, Japanese people. <laughs> I'll I never forget the, the shit. Japanese. He kicks the dude in the shit. <laughs> he's like, like, ah, it's like I'll never forgive the Japanese. The Japanese. <laughs> so because his daughter married a Japanese man, and now he's mad. And uh, <laughs> so stupid. And then we leave the end of part two with him traveling to Japan to see his grandson Which apparently. Is... Which is the beginning of part three. And I love this ending section. By the way, also shout out to yeah. the uh, insert song that plays in that ending section. I think it's super lovely. Um, which, again, would urge people to go and look for the OST. Can't recommend it enough. Just that old epilogue can is I just really sweet and neat. Can I say know? that that epilogue? Because we didn't get an epilogue like that in part one. Um, we got That's something right. that kind of just shows off, you know, you know, because part one ends is like a downer kind of like vibe like part yeah. two more leaves you with like a very sweet very fulfilling kind of like oh that's cool that all these characters like get their ending do you know what this kind of reminds me of though or kind of gives me the feeling of this was a prototype for how part four ends oh because you get that same kind of thing in the end of part four you do <laughs> actually yeah I don't want to go that far. Like you get a sort of like a final goodbye to all the characters. We don't really know where they will end up, like you do with part. Yeah, two. but you do. But you do get a little bit of a sense of where they go from the end. Sort of, I guess. Um, but it does feel like a like a final goodbye to the rest of the characters, which is really yeah uh, sweet. Um, and then uh, we get a tease for part three after the credits with. Our next JoJo, who is in prison for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. For so, fighting demons. <laughs> so, this is part two, basically. This is Battle Tendency. And I know, like, John, you said it's, like, your favorite part, pretty much? Oh, yeah. This is my favorite part. Mm. A personal favorite. I know yeah. it's not the m most well-written, most well-animated, um, best music and all that. Like, four and five are really great. Mm-hmm. Three is pretty great too, but to me, this one is just because I just love the character of Joseph so much. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So I do before we we will do we, we, what we're gonna do moving forward. We'll do a bit of ranking because that's always fun. But before do I before that I do want to ask like a few questions. So just like last time, uh, what was your favorite quote from the part two? Oh wait, Negrandio, Smokey. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> There's so many to choose. Bring it from. in there. <laughs> There's so many to choose from in part two, especially. It has so many great memes. No, um, part two is absolutely iconic. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 great. Part uh, two, part two got us prepared for just how meme worthy dialogue could be when part three came along. Oh, definitely. Um, and in terms of the fights, because that's like one of the big things, especially with part two and moving forward. Uh, which fight was your favorite, actually? Easily Wham. Easily yeah. Wham. Wham. Yeah. Joseph, like yeah. I think it Can has I, this to be might, Ramu. This might be this might be a bit of a hot take. I don't know, but I think that fight is definitely in my top five JoJo fights ever. Mm. Oh, that, I don't know if that's fight. a hot take or not, but it's definitely in my personal top five for JoJo fights. You know, I don't think that's a hot take. It's a damn good fight, and it's extremely memorable. So I, you yeah. might be right. Yeah, I agree. I I think. I definitely like the Wamu and Joseph fight, uh, but I will give a, a shout out again to Straitso and Joseph as the first fight of the park because I think it did such a great job of like setting the tone for what's to come with the bullshittery and the memory and the craziness of it all. Yeah, <laughs> it's just iconic. Shout out guns hey. and grenades, dude! Shout yeah, out! Shout out to the racist cop in the first episode getting his come up and stuff. I know, right? Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> So yeah, so from here on out, we'll close each of these podcasts just like this. So obviously, it's very easy for now because we're only dealing with two parts. But uh, let's rank the parts individually for you guys. So we'll start with Alex. So how would you rank them? Okay, well, this will be very I mean, easy because it's only two parts. Yeah, ju just with the, the two that we've we've uh, done spoiler cast so far already. I, I mean, I'm obviously going to rank it two and then one. Yeah. Part two, then part one. Um, although I will say as we go along and as I've gone along as a JoJo's fan, even reading the manga now, since I'm, I think, yeah, I am caught up on part nine. Um, I'm still to this day impressed with just how much Araki was able to establish in part one with such mm -hmm. a limited runtime. Sure. Uh, Chinoda? Yeah. Two over one. Um, uh, same. And I will never, I've, I cannot stop emphasizing part one matters. Never skip over it. It matters so fucking much because it sets up everything. Like it, it's the it's the beginning of the journey. You don't skip over the beginning of the journey. You, you don't want, like you don't skip over punching the frog that cracked the stone beneath no. it. You don't miss that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you don't. You really don't. The power of Hamon and Zapelli. Yeah. Don't skip about, over um... how many breads have you eaten. <laughs> John, John, I expect the same you? answer from you. I mean, like, it's no Easy. secret. Part two is my favorite part of all JoJo's of all time. So, like, it, it's going to maintain itself at the yeah. top throughout all of these rankings. As as we continue with these uh, episodes, I'm sure it'll be more fun to hear, like, the different rankings between the four of us. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I really, really should go watch part six because I still haven't watched it. It's time, bro. You got time to. You know we, what? We're almost John, done. You when still we, haven't? We... Are you serious? Yeah, I still haven't. John, when we do our spoiler cast for it, it'll be a great time to watch it. I know, yeah, right? probably <laughs> in about two and a half years, <laughs> when part seven is airing. Oh that's when man, I'll if watch only part six. if only that'll be in only two years. I wish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, same part two over part one. And again, thought it'll be really fun to do it as we continue with the spoiler cast series, and then we'll see how different rankings for each of us. So I think it could be really fun. Um, as we add more parts, it's definitely going to get more difficult for oh, me yeah. to like genuinely rank them it's gonna get more fun yeah <laughs> but yeah that was uh jojo's bizarre adventure part two battle tendency um i had a lot of fun i think we can all agree it's a just on its own even it's a great piece of anime and manga um oh, absolutely any, yeah is there any like final thoughts any of you guys want to share before we roll the credits on this one i mean i think it's a shame that a lot of people overlook uh, part two they're like oh yeah it's one of the weaker jojo mm -hmm. um parts and i'm like but it's my favorite like i understand yeah. that from a 
anime perspective of like uh character growth of uh, fight scenes all that stuff like yes part three four five are very much better and more impressive however part two remains my favorite because of how much joy i just get out of it like i don't need all yeah. those fancy bells and whistles and like all these really cool stand powers and villains and good music like this to me was the start of jojo's <laughs> this is the start of jojo's it, no, you it know what I can compare. It, you know what I can compare it to? Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z. This is the Dragon Ball aspect of it. I really like Dragon Ball compared to Dragon Ball Z, but no, that's what I'm saying. It's, but I, it's, I feel like that's not a hot take. I, I think a lot of people like beginning. Dragon Ball more than Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Yep. I agree that definitely for me that like part two is the, the part that solidified my love for JoJo, and then it just kept going like this it just keeps going further up because it yeah. just gets better and better yeah awesome. it's crazier and crazier it's awesome. uh, <laughs> my final thoughts i would say is watch part one and part two together like don't 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 i mean it's part of the same them. yeah it's, it's the same part season one and part it's two part is of the same the season yeah, yeah it's part of the same season but i would say don't wait like watch them together and it, it it's a more cohesive experience when you do it like that. I, I will I'd say, say it's kind of jarring though, going from part one to part two, like cause it, because of a huge time. It's a skip huge and, like, time jump. Yeah. Yeah. It, we were like I think yeah. it works two generations best for away. it though. I think like it I, like I the... think it's worth it though. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually kind of agree with that. I feel like if you are gonna watch it, it it's more of a cohesive story if you watch part one and part two together. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, Especially but... since the beginning of part one involves a care or part two rather involves a character from part one. Awesome. Well, that was all fun. Uh so uh thank yeah. you everyone for dropping in to watch us. Uh I had a great time doing this and I'm super excited to keep moving forward with this series, and I'm sure all four of us are equally excited. Thank about you for it. hosting Natai. You were great as usual. It's, it's uh, great being on you. this side for once. <laughs> <laughs> not having you know. to worry about the pacing and stuff yeah yeah um so yeah before we go uh please don't forget to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff if you liked what you saw and you want to see more um uh, check down to below to find links to anime club after dark on twitter tiktok discord uh we're super active on discord uh especially lately i've seen a lot of new people coming in and chatting which is really really fun absolutely uh, yeah uh, we have a you merch get unrestricted store. access to John's rants, that, which are always a you pleasure. You don't have to, to wait for through. the monthly episode. I will just tell it to you every week. <laughs> They're yes. always a pleasure to go through. Um, but yeah, we also have a merch store down there as well with shirts, mugs, stickers, and more to show off your love of Anime Club After Dark to your friends and family that already think you're kind of weird. So you can be even weirder when wear our <laughs> merch. Why not? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And with that, I've been your host Nitai, and we will see you all next time. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. It's definitely not 3 a.m. in now. the morning here. It's cool. Oh my god, he's, he's, fine. he's, he's tipsy. He's the... <laughs> tipsy for what? Jim's he didn't tipsy. drink anything. He's been drinking freaking bourbon, dude. Oh my god. god. Is gone. Is Where did you finish oh, that? That's vodka. Like Lord. 30 minutes ago. God damn it. I drank through that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a problem with alcohol... <laughs> Please talk to a friend. Please. And watch JoJo's. And watch JoJo's with your drunk oh my friends, god. I guess. <laughs> Why oh the my fuck god. My lights go out. That's my god stand. God is angry. That's my stand. <laughs> this is the work of an enemy stand. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>